Phantom Breaker Omnia is Rocket Panda Games' newest anime fighter that's now available on the Nintendo Switch. But you also have the option to pick up the game on both PlayStation and Xbox consoles and on PC as well via Steam. In this review, I'm going to be focusing mostly on my Nintendo Switch experience as I played this game mostly on the Nintendo Switch Lite, but also checked out the docked experience to see if there was any sort of contrast. And simply put, this is an anime fighter that's almost kind of like no other game before it, only because we haven't seen that many anime fighters probably since the PlayStation 3 era, and it can easily be considered as a newer take on the Asuka 120% series from back on the Sega Saturn days, which is a game that I don't think anyone actually remembers since I believe it was only ever released in Japan and nowhere else. In this package you are going to be receiving 20 or so fighters with most notable ones from a few high praise anime shows, which certainly from a years back they were extremely popular, but other than that all the other characters are kind of just part of this very own series. As far as modes are concerned, you do have the single player story for each one of the characters like most old school fighters did. You pick a character and basically go off until you roll the credits and then do it all over again with a brand new fighter. There's also the head to head arcade option. If you want to play local versus with other friends, uh, you also have a score and timer mode, and of course the online multiplayer, which of course does not have rollback netcode. So I can easily see this impacting your experience if you purchase this game to be able to play it online. But before you even begin, there's three character playstyles to choose from, which reminds me a lot of the isms back from Street Fighter Alpha 3, where you have a quick, a hard, and an omnia change, which basically will just dictate just how your characters are going to be able to fight. Uh, with the quick option, which is the default one, there's combo base pretty much based on the strength of like each one of your attacks. Uh, then you have the hard, which is going to be like one big attack based on a button press. And then you have the omni option, which kind of mixes both of those together into a pretty seamless experience. And I think Omnia feels really good at the end of the day. When it comes to combat, it's pretty straightforward. Like I mentioned before, with the quick option, you have a low, mid, and high set of attacks, and they all string onto each other when you have also a special button to take care of. Uh, adding directional options changes the way your combo is going to be stringed, so you're constantly shifting from low to mid to highs, and it's just a continuation of that same combo. It's also worth considering that you should be expecting heavy combos to be more lethal, but also be shorter. Smaller combos will be more lengthy, uh, but they'll probably do way more or less damage as well. It's basically a juggling act to figure out which combo you want to string into and when you need to switch up. It all culminates for the meter build, which uh, this is going to be for your breaker attacks as basically like a big flashy finisher. There's other attacks that you're also going to be doing with your finisher, like uh, boosting yourself, you know, kind of like a different mode for some fighters, a stun escape. Uh, but those become a little bit more situational, the better you get. There's also the clash system, which cancels each other's attacks, and it can be considered a parry at the end of the day. And this is kind of like also to boost your gauge as well. So when it comes to the actual combat, whenever you are having an encounter, every single one of the fighters obviously feels unique and original in their very own way. And you never really feel like you are missing anything out. However, with the understanding that this is kind of like an old school fighter. So some of those newer abilities and techniques that you should be expecting every new fighter to have, this one just doesn't necessarily carry them. And the negativity doesn't quite just end there. Uh, there's moments that the game feels at odds with itself visually where some things just kind of like stand out in the worst way possible. It also doesn't necessarily help that the voice acting is kind of all over the place. With that said though, thankfully performance on the Nintendo Switch is on the very good end of things. The Switch Lite runs this game flawlessly and I never really saw any real frame drops or anything along those lines and when i checked that out on dock it looks even better and it runs just as good so that was never a concern whenever you're playing this game with that said however online experience having to put in like an ethernet plug and all of that if you don't have an oled that is something you definitely want to consider if you have like a v1 v2 uh, switch and you don't have an oled because you're just going to need to wire up if you want to have a decent online experience at that 
Phantom Breaker Omnia is an anime fighter from an almost bygone, long gone era that we've kind of never seen the resurgence of ever again. And it's interesting to see that they finally decided to release this game worldwide. Uh, but at the end of the day, it does certainly come with some of the drawbacks of the times, some of the improvements that other fighters have done that this game simply does not have. Nintendo's Fear Gifts Phantom Breaker Omnia on the Nintendo Switch, a 6.5 out of 10. If you're brand new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up, and as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya!